My current sharpening system is diamond plates or diamond stones. And I have this bar here, this plate, this is a 300 grit on this side. I use this for more rough work if something's really out of shape. And then if I flip it over, I have the 1000 grit side to refine the rough work. And then I have an 8,000 grit stone for the final polishing. And when I'm normally doing this, all I have to really do is just touch it up on this or the leather strop. Sort of depends on what my needs are and what my mood is. Of course, it will pass the paper cutting test, which seems to be everyone's favorite. But more importantly, it'll take as thin as a shaving as I want. As you guys can hopefully see, this is basically see-through. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but that's 0 0.0005 or 0 0.01 for you metric fans. So it works. The problem is the barrier to entry. When you're new to sharpening, this stuff not only looks expensive, but adds up really quick. So if you take the Trend 300 1000 stone, we're looking at 117 at the time of this recording. And if you wanted to add the 8000 grit, this is another $85, so we're over $200 already. Now, to be fair, there's some controversy surrounding the really high grit diamond stones. This is DMT's extra, extra fine, which puts it at about 8,000 grit. Um, I will say that this stone works. Um, I don't know that it's necessary, which is why I mentioned, depending on my mood, whether I use this or just head to the strop. That being said, you could just use this. This is what I did for a long time. 300 on this side for the rough, 1000 for the final shaping, and then head straight to the strop. That's still 100 and what I say, $17 with the strop. Let's say we're at about 125. 125 is not $44. This box right here, $44 again at the time of this recording. And everything that you need is in this box. We're gonna tear into this a little bit and show you what's inside, and then we'll go ahead and put it to use. I've been using this thing for about a week non-stop in here sharpening good tool steel, cheap tool steel, grinding the blades back down, re-putting a new bevel on them with this system, and I definitely give it a stamp of approval. What you have in here is float glass. Is float glass perfectly sharp or perfectly flat? I don't know, but I don't know that anything else in my shop is perfectly flat either. I will say it's flat enough for sharpening. These stones the diamond stones come with a certification that says they're within a certain tolerance for flatness, and even they have their little inconsistencies as you go. So in my experience, the float glass is definitely flat enough to do the sharpening. The glass that comes with it is 5 16 inch thick. It is five inches wide. It is 12 inches long. Under there, we have some literature which we will put aside for a second. The literature has sort of the instructions and what you're getting and how to use it and everything else. It also tells you what grit our lapping film is. So this is the lapping film that is designed to go on the glass. So the glass is our hard flat surface. And then this is what's actually going to sharpen. If we start here, uh, this is 300 grit. Then we go to 600, 1200, 1800, 8000, 14,000 and 60,000. Now for a bit of context, this 300, 1000 stone starts at 300. So that's similar to our dark blue here. And then a green honing compound is right around 0.3 microns, which is right around 60,000 grit, which puts us up at this white one here. Um, this particular film, it's not sandpaper, it is actually film, is sticky back. So this is going to be able to tear this off just like a sticker and stick it to something. Again, we'll go more into that here in just a second. Also, someone's gonna wonder, is it, is it necessary to have all seven and use all seven? 
And I don't think that it is. I think that you could skip every other one, but I will say this one, seven comes in the kit, we might as well use it. And also think of it like regular sanding. If I start sanding on something with a 60 grit sandpaper and then I jump straight to a 220, that 220 is gonna have a really hard time digging down enough material to take out those 60 grit scratch marks. But if I go to 60 and then 80 and 120 and work my way up to 220, each one of those grits is going to do a much better job because you're only making it do what it was designed to do. 220 grit sandpaper is not designed to take something from a rough surface all the way down to a smooth surface. And that's the same thing here. So while you can get away with skipping some grits, depending on what you're doing and the type of steel you're sharpening, we're gonna use all of them just in case. So let's set these aside for now. Also in the box, you have three of these pre-cut. This is like a rubber shelf liner. These things work really well. I've been using them with the glass, uh, but I also have one that's cut for the stones. And when I take these inside to sharpen the kitchen knives, this is exactly what I use. Put it on the countertop, put my stone on there, a little water, and I start sharpening and it keeps that stone, or in this case, the glass, flat on the table and keeps it from moving around. So those are super handy to have. The only other things in the box is two more pieces of glass. Now we're going to take this, we're gonna start setting it up, but we are going to not do it exactly how the instructions say. Originally, this system is made to use one full sheet or half sheet, as it were, on each face. So you'd have a sheet here and then you could flip it over. You could have a sheet here. You could label them so you know which side is which. But this is an awful lot of realty for just this chisel. And if you think about it, I have this diamond stone here, which I normally use, when I'm grinding on here, I start up here at the top. I'm only gonna come back to about right here. So we're only dealing with a little over half of this anyways. I can always turn the stone around. Of course, I can go left to right, but really I'm only using about half of it at a time anyways. So as I started looking at this, I thought, what if we take this paper, turn it sideways? Well, that's a little bit more than half as well. So these are three inches wide. That seems plenty for what we're trying to do here. I've drawn a line three inches from the edge of this piece of plywood. I can just butt this up on the edge here, just flush it up, drop my straight edge or my ruler right here. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut right here. And we're gonna do that to each of them as we go. Now I have seven smaller pieces here. And according to the instructions, we need to clean the glass off. So I am actually going to clean the glass off. But the instructions also say to use a little bit of the soapy water on here, peel the backs off of these, and then that way you can rearrange them. They'll be a little bit slippery. Squeegee all the stuff out, and then when you're done, the water will evaporate and this stuff will be stuck in place. The problem that I have found is that while that is true, when if you use water as a lubricant, it will seep back in and will release the backing, the stickiness that's on here. It will dry out eventually and remain sticky, but I didn't want to mess with it. So what I learned, especially for using these smaller pieces, is we'll just come up here right to the edge because it's good to have stuff like this on the edge. And we can just go back and forth here, peeling this off as we go. And now we have the one piece stuck down. What I can do is turn this around. We'll just peel this back a little bit. Same thing right up here on the edge. And you can see how you can kind of see through it almost. It is indeed a film. It's almost like a plastic. There we go. And we don't have any bubbles in it. So what we can do is just simply flip this over, clean this side up. And do the same thing.
What we're gonna do today is put a 30 degree secondary bevel on this blade. I've reground it back to 25 degrees, which is what it was set at from the factory. This came out of my uh, Lowe's, what do you call it? Cobalt block plane. Now, again, the original instructions say to use water, WD-40, anything that you want to use as a lubricant while you're doing this. I'm going to use WD-40. WD-40, when it soaks in, will not mess with the adhesive and pull it back up. So this is our lowest grit. I'm just gonna squirt a couple drops on here. We can move it around if we want to, it really doesn't matter. In this first pass with this one, all I wanna do is set it down. I apologize ahead of time if this is really loud. And we just wanna sharpen this until we get a burr on the back side. And you guys can hopefully see that black right there. That's actually the metal coming off, which is what we want. I can wipe some away. And I already feel that burr on that back side. So now I have a very small micro bevel on there. That's all I needed. Now if I want to, I don't know if this is gonna pick up, I can turn this around. I can set this flat on here and I can pull and that'll just get rid of that burr. What I noticed with the chisels when I've been sharpening chisels is it doesn't really matter. All right, so on this one, I'm just gonna go to a count of 10 on each one of these grits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And I'm gonna try just not even taking that burr off of there. We're gonna flip it over. And this is where labeling comes into play. I forgot to label mine. But if you take a little piece of blue tape and label each one, that would be better. All right, so we're gonna go here. All right, now same thing. We just went through all of these. I can simply drop this on here, put some pressure on. Just kind of go back and forth on that edge right there. And that's just gonna make sure that I polish off any of that burr. Now once again, we'll try the paper test. Cuts paper. And of course it will cut through the wood. I could measure this, it's probably gonna be a little thicker. And of course this walnut's not gonna hold its shape very well anyways. 0 0.001, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that. Not too bad. Now you have to remember, this is just a cheap hand plane with cheap tool steel. I cannot stand this thing. I only keep it around for demonstration purposes. And apparently when I feel like I wanna be frustrated at something, I'll break it out and use it. Um, I just don't recommend it to anybody, but the steel itself is really soft. So one could say, well, it worked really well because the steel is so soft. Actually that works against you because by the time I get this thing set up to take a shaving, it's almost time to resharpen it. I've used it on the A2 Lee Nielsen steel. I've used it on my Narex Richter chisels and it's worked beautifully. Same thing, about 10 seconds is all that it needed. The five and a half needed a little bit longer just because there's more steel, but not by much. Now, as far as cleanup goes, you could say that this is a little bit messy. Try the water trick. Try using water with it instead of the WD-40. It could work better for you. Again, I just couldn't figure out how to make it work. What I did notice is that with the WD-40 or the water, we can just wipe these down just pretty easily and just store them somewhere. And we only used two plates. If you think about it, we took that $44 kit we took the paper that they gave us or the film that they gave us. We cut a three inch strip off. There's still two more three inch strips to be had from each one of these pieces. And then a little two inch strip at the end. And a little two inch strip at the end, we're gonna use that specifically for our third plate piece of glass. We're gonna use it up as a chisel sharpening jig. We'll talk about that later. But for now, that works really good for chisels or plain irons. Again, you're gonna get three pieces per sheet 
Hopefully this is making sense. And it just extends the life of this stuff three times more than what it was originally designed for. Now, if you need more paper, you can always get more paper. You can get full sheets like this. You can also go below the grits that are that come in this kit. So if you have some really heavy sharpening to get rid of, um, these come in a 60, a 80, and a 100 uh, micron, which is the equivalent of 250, 180, and 120. So you could essentially go all the way from 120 all the way up to 60,000, working your way through the grits. That's not bad. And of course, these heavier duty grits are gonna be for a lot of material removal. I think that's what I had to use on this to get it to actually go back to its original shape in a timely manner. So that stuff is available. I will leave links for everything down in the description if you guys can check all that stuff out. But again, for a $44 kit that we actually extended its life threefold, I think that's a pretty good deal. Hopefully it's helped out. If you have any questions, leave them down below. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.